Hi guys, welcome back to another podcast from this channel, Narcon. Today I'd like to welcome you to explore an area within the narcissistic abuse cycle that should, if you're going through a narcissistic relationship, throw some light and clarity onto a very confusing time within the cycle. And if you've healed or are healing from an experience you've had with one of these types, that you will heal quicker in the understanding and the total clarity of what you actually went through. So I'd like to go to the stage in the cycle and just for anyone who's not familiar with a cycle, a narcissist takes their target through. They will start off with a love bomb stage. They will follow on with a devaluation stage and a discard stage if you don't actually leave the relationship and escape it at that stage. And the cycle will go on. I would include the smear campaign, possibly, or it will go quickly back up to the love bomb cycle again. And people go through these cycles many, many times. Some people can go up to seven, to nine, to 11 cycles with the narcissist before they finally break away and understand what's going on and leave. Of course, getting this education helps people leave quicker and regain time in their lives where they can actually live instead of wasting it with a narcissist. So guys, the time I'd like to take us to is the time in the devaluation stage when this is the time the narcissist basically capitalizes on the love bomb stage. They've managed to hook the target in, they've managed to isolate the target, and they've managed to make you dependent on them as their your principal source of validation. So you're quite vulnerable and quite susceptible at this stage to any maneuvers the narcissist will make. You go through a dreadful time when the narcissist starts to withdraw and to put you down and to extract the maximum amount of supply from you in the negative sense, as well as little dips into the positivity of the love bomb stage when they give you time off from the devaluation in order to keep you hooked. In this stage, you are being slowly run down and sometimes obviously run down if you come across the rage cycles and negative things are done to you. It's a time of dreadful hurt and confusion on your part because you've gone from believing and really believing that this person was the one you were meant to meet in your life and is your soulmate and is a very valuable person and you don't want to lose them. A series of manipulations have been run on you and in an intense love bomb to bring you to this stage. So in essence, you're prepared to take a certain amount of the negativity the narcissist dishes out at you in this stage. And this is a stage when the narcissist reaps what they're sowing within you. They may look for a further trapping of you by having children with you or marrying you or extracting money from you. They This is the extraction stage, which I would call like the spider gets the victim in the web and this is the time they're feeding on you without you knowing. They're nibbling around the edges basically. But you're beginning to feel it. They're beginning to come at you in full force and you're beginning to become aware that this isn't what you signed up for and that this level of negativity, no matter how hard you try to appease the narcissist or in inverted com commas, you're working on the relationship while the narcissist is working on the extraction of supply from you and the destruction of you as a person. So it gets to the stage, and this is where I'd like to go with this, it gets to the stage where you begin to fight back. You begin to realize that no matter what you do, no matter 
how many cartwheels you do for the narcissist when he says jump and you or she says jump and you jump higher and higher and higher that nothing is going to satisfy them. This is a torturous stage. The devaluation in itself is torturous with you trying to work to stop it. But the next stage, when you actually start to fight back and put some boundaries down for yourself to have your basic needs met, to stop the abuse, to look after yourself in some way, this is such a torturous stage. So remember, the narcissist never works in a linear fashion and everything is designed to confuse you so that your thought processes are all over the stage and you can't fix on a thought and see that thought come to fruition because just as you're believing that the narcissist say doesn't love you because they've done 10 horrible things to you, they will suddenly backtrack and change the manipulation up again and you'll go into a love bomb stage. So there isn't any stage where it's easy to work out what a narcissist is doing to you because they keep you in a confused state. So you're pushing back, you're setting a few boundaries, you're asking for a few needs to be met. What does this look like? I'm going to give you some real life examples. So an example I had in my own personal encounter with a narcissist was we were cooking a meal or I was cooking a meal and that particular meal, well, we have it in Ireland and it's actually called a fry or a fry up. It's in Europe. I don't know if you have it in the States or in Russia or wherever else you are tuning in from today. But it's an enjoyable um, combination that you can have for breakfast and it's a rasher that's bacon sausage, egg, and in Ireland we have what's called put pudding. I think in Scotland you have haggis. So in order for the full experience, let us say, to be enjoyed, all of the components, you know, are required or that's that would be my take on it. Well, there was a particular component of that fry that I would particularly like and without it, I kind of just didn't really want the experience. So so I, the narcissist was going out to buy the ingredients and I was at home waiting to cook this breakfast. Now, at this stage, we'd been living together for quite some time and he knew of my particular little picadillo that this is what the ingredient that I most cherished in this particular food source. So lo and behold, out he goes and it's not a, a long journey to the shop. It's about or the store, it's about um, a 10 minute all rounder, comes back without the ingredient that I would particularly like. At this stage, I'd kind of had enough and I was seeing things as I'm sure you have, leave in the comments when you started to see the light and get the breakthrough moments. So not being one that would normally ask for my needs to be met at that stage, I did actually say, but you've left this item behind. And he just went, oh yeah, I forgot it. Sure, look, it doesn't matter. Mm. I actually said, but actually it does. It does matter. I'd really, you know, that, as you know, that's my favorite part of it. Would you mind going back out and getting it? I'd really appreciate it. Now, here is a thing that someone that loves you wouldn't, first of all, forget it, something that you particularly liked. And if they did forget it, they'd say, darling, no problem. I'll go out and get that for you. I'm so sorry. I forgot it. They wouldn't go with a childlike attitude and say, it doesn't matter anyway. Forget it anyway. And then be very grumpy going back out to get it for you. What happened then was that person didn't come back from a short journey for a full hour. This is when, and you're waiting, you know, for a meal, you're hungry and you want to cook it and get on with the day. This is when 
you pull back and ask for a need to be met, the narcissist will throw it right back at you as you being demanding, controlling, grumpy, not a nice person to live with, and will also hit back by annoying you for you asking you to have your needs met. It's a tiny petty example, but the tiny petty example says everything about the rest of what's happening in the relationship. So they'll stay out longer to annoy and frustrate you. And they'll also use that time to get you back, to get you back. They'll use that time to possibly go after the new supply, make a phone call or do whatever else they wanted to do in a kind of a childlike reaction or a childish reaction, vindictive reaction to you, daring to ask them to fulfill a little need of yours. And that's the time they begin to see everything that you want and everything that you do as being wrong. And that's the time they'll probably ring their friend and say, oh, look what he's asking for now, or look what she's asking for now. This person is impossible to live with. Notwithstanding that it's their lack of love for you, their lack of care, and their lack of willingness to help you or to see that you get your needs met, that it's actually them that's causing the problem. Narcissists will turn it immediately on you. The next thing I noticed at that stage when I was pushing back and becoming a little bit stronger was things would go missing in the house. Things like bank cards and keys and phones. And now I know I'm notorious for losing my phone and my keys, but this was happening on a much more frequent basis. And particularly just before a holiday, the bank card went missing, my bank card, and I knew I'd left it somewhere or within a certain area. So without labouring these points, guys, these are small examples of a narcissist taking secret revenge against you, confusing you, making you feel discombobulated. Anytime you ask for your needs to be met, they have a I hope this is the right pronunciation, a smugs board, is that it? Like a board where you get all, um, I think, beginnings of a meal or aperitifs or little pieces of cheese and pate and whatever. They have a smugs board of manipulations that they used on you in the love bomb stage to get you hooked, like triangulation, isolation, um, the gaslighting, all these things that they did on you to bring you into the web, to get you hooked. They use them in a kind of a positive way initially in the love bomb stage so that they were expressing their love for you and they might have triangulated you with someone else and said, but you're so much better. I love you so much more. In the stage where you're putting boundaries in, when you've gone through a really bad devaluation, they will pick the manipulations that worked best on you in the love bomb stage and they will put a negative connotation on them when you're pulling back and setting boundaries in order to draw you back in for longer in the relationship and to keep working you to pull pull them you to I don't know if that's the word but to soften you up to keep you there to extend your battery life to get the most out of you. At this stage, they may even use future faking. They may bring the future faking into a type of reality and start to actually, say, setting a date for a wedding or going forward with a plan that you had that you'd kind of given up all hope of it ever coming into reality. They'll use this series of manipulations in a negative way and say use the triangulation at this stage to make you actually really feel bad to work for them more by upping another person, by really praising them and not coming back to you with the validation that actually you're much better than this other person, 
but actually looking at you as you have a lot to do to improve, don't you? They may even withdraw sexually from you, withhold. They may have been the ones that insisted that, you know, you look great the way you were in the love bomb stage. And then suddenly in the deval stage, when you're putting your boundaries up, they'll start to say things like, I'm not that attracted to you anymore. Or you could do it losing it, but a weight there, Paula. Um, or, you know, you've been through it, guys. Again, leave in the comments what you got when you started to push, put your boundaries up, when you realized that you were actually not being loved, but you were being the opposite of loved. You were actually being taken for a ride and being abused and not being looked after in the deval stage. Another thing they might do is if you go out in company, Whereas in the love bomb stage, they would have maybe been paying you a lot of attention. And then with a normal partner, you know, you check in every now and again on your partner. If you're in a, a social setting, I'm not saying you're you're in their pocket, but you're acknowledging them. You know, you're, you're saying hi or you're introducing them to someone or if they're off for a few hours, you check in on them at some stage in the evening with a narcissist. You don't exist in this social setting and they're focusing their attention fully on the most attractive competition for you in the room or just ignoring you fully or even leaving the social setting without you. So, guys, these are the type of things that narcissists do when you start pushing back in the relationship when you start putting your boundaries in, they become competitive. They become competitive with you and they make the smugs go board of manipulations that were used in an attractive way to reel you in initially, to beat you down and to entice you to more output in the devaluation stage. You'll be introduced to the future faking, the triangulation, you'll be introduced to them giving you a mini love bomb um, to keep you, keep you believing that the person that you saw at the beginning of the relationship is actually still there, is actually still attainable and is actually real. If you're going through this, let us know. Give other examples to other people so they may it may resonate with them. And again, guys, these behaviours are not enough to clarify that you were with a narcissist. It's the pattern of behaviours on a continual basis that will help you recognise that you were possibly narcissistically abused. And when you can put those pieces in place, you have a much better chance of healing well without the confusion about yourself and that person and what went on with you in the relationship. And that is a light bulb moment that is so amazing when people get it. And that's why I'd say, if you leave your example in the comments, it may set a light bulb off for somebody else to understand what they've gone through and to heal well, well and quickly, excuse me. Guys, until next time, please look after yourself first. Feed yourself well, eat nutritious food, take exercise, learn about narcissism, learn about yourself and revalidate yourself as the good person, as the wonderful person you are. Don't concentrate on all the negative things that the narcissist brought up in you. Sure, accept some of them but really concentrate on the positive parts of you. See you soon, guys. Bye for now.